In this video, we're going to work on the Alex problem called naming unbranched alkenes and alkynes. This problem is going to give you three different molecules. Some of them will be alkynes, some of them will be alkenes, and you have to come up with their name. We're actually going to start with, uh, let's start with this molecule first uh, to name it. It's the easiest one, I think, of the three. The first step in the process is for us to figure out how many carbon atoms we have in our carbon chain. This molecule has four carbon atoms, and four carbon atoms is indicated with the prefix but. Once we have figured out how many carbon atoms we have, then we are going to number the carbon chain. And we're going to number the carbon chain in such a way that the double bond, in this case, double bond, the double bond starts at the lowest possible number on the chain. So for this molecule, I'm numbering it from left to right. The double bond is starting at carbon number two, and it's going to carbon number three. Uh, and so that is going to be, number two is going to be the location of the double bond. Again, we, we use the starting point of the double bond as its location. To name this molecule, we are going to indicate the location of the double bond, which is carbon number two. We're going to use the prefix but because there are four carbon atoms in the molecule. And then the suffix for this molecule is going to be ene to communicate that there is a double bond present in the molecule. So again, this ene suffix we use when there is a carbon-carbon double bond present, alkene. And if we have a triple bond, which we're going to do next, we're going to use the ine, Y-N-E suffix, that's for alkynes or carbon-carbon triple bonds. So this name tells us that we've got a four-carbon chain. The ene part tells us that there is a carbon-carbon double bond. And the two tells us the location of the carbon-carbon double bond. Let's do the third molecule next. Find our carbon chain. This molecule has a three-carbon chain. So that means that we are looking at a prop. We want to number the carbon chain so that the triple bond gets the lowest possible starting point. That means for this molecule, we're going to be numbering it from right to left so that the triple bond starts at carbon number one and goes to carbon number two. If we numbered it this way, the triple bond would be starting at two going to three. And that's not the lowest possible number. So again, to put the name together, uh, we've got a three carbon chain. That's a prop. Uh, it's a triple bond. So that means that we're ending the molecule's name with Y-N-E. And the location of the triple bond is carbon number one, one propine. Now you may have learned that you don't need to include the one in the name. And that is true. Um, but sometimes that's a little bit confusing for students. When in doubt, just leave the number there. Alex is perfectly fine with it. The last molecule that we're looking at, this is a two carbon chain. So uh, two carbon chain means that it is going to be an eth. I'm going to number the carbon chain to give the triple bond the smallest possible number. And it doesn't matter if we go from left to right or right to left. We're starting at carbon number one. Eth for two carbons. We're ending it with Y and E because it's a triple bond. And again, this is another example of a molecule where the one doesn't really need to be there. Uh, Alex doesn't care if it's there or not. You may know this molecule as just ethine, um, but it is okay and understandable if you want to include the one.